You know, ever since I first saw the trailer for this movie, I've really been looking forward to it. So how did it turn out? Well, my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for A Wrinkle in Time. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help me out by clicking that subscribe button. Become one of my subscribers. Also, click that little bell so you can be notified when I make uploads and give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So, you just saw the intro to this review, to my opinion, and I said that I was really looking forward to this movie. Um, I really have been since I first saw the trailers many, many months ago. Uh, this is A Wrinkle in Time. It's being uh, directed by Ava DuVernay. I am a big, big, big fan of her work. Um, it is not that much work, to be honest with you. She did Selma with David Oyelowo that came out in 2013 or 14. And she also did the documentary 13th, which is on Netflix right now, um, that deals with the uh, incarceration rate in this country, the United States, and how uh, messed up that is. And so, you know, she did a great job with Selma. She did a great job with 13th. Um, she was, um, you know, the front runner to direct the Black Panther movie that's in theaters right now that's doing very well, which instead was directed by Ryan Coogler. Her and Marvel slash Disney had some uh, differences in the pen on the way they wanted to tell the story of that film, Black Panther. So she decided to step away from that project and do A Wrinkle in Time, another um, Disney movie. And so uh, this this is being based off of a book uh, by Madeline L. Engel, which came out many, 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 many years ago. Um, I have not read the book. People have you know mentioned to me, hey, Brandy, you may want to read the book before you go see the movie, you know, just so you can compare. But me, I kind of like just to go into movies fresh, not knowing anything. But after, you know, just so I can be surprised. But after I, I've uh, I just got back from a, a screening of A Wrinkle in Time and I'm very eager to know the thoughts and opinions of those people that have read the book and how they compare it to this live action film. Now, you've probably heard a number of people say this before, and I'm going to say it as well. But I've always heard, um, you know, in the promotion of this movie coming up to its release, which is now that this film is un unfilmable, unfilmable that the imaginations just run wild in this book and it's just so creative and that would just be impossible to put that on the big screen and whether that's true or not of course i am going to talk about that but i want to do that uh, a little later on now um about this movie also this was in my top 10 uh most anticipated films of 2018 um, it's a very important film to me just because I am a big fan of time travel and the fifth dimension and things like that. And I do remember them mentioning the fifth dimension in the uh, marketing material in some of the trailers. Um, so that just really fascinates me. Um, Storm Reed, she popped up. Uh, she's the main uh, protagonist in this movie. She popped up in 12 Years a Slave. And I don't even remember her in that movie. But, you know, Ava DuVernay. Um, this is I said this is a very important film because she's a black female director and female directors don't get a lot of uh, clout, a lot of play, a lot of recognition or praise that they deserve in Hollywood. So it's even harder for a black woman. And so for her, you know, with me being black, too, I can relate, you know, with her being a black woman and she's getting a budget of a film of, I believe, one hundred and three million dollars. I'm rooting for her. Just like I was rooting for Ryan Coogler and everybody else that had to do uh, with Black Panther. Um, so just some things that I liked about this movie was Chris Pine. Um, everything about him in this movie was freaking fantastic. Um, record of time. He was the best thing in this movie to me. His acting felt real. It felt genuine. Uh, I felt a strong presence from his character. Um, unfortunately, he was not in the movie that much. Um, and that is one of the downsides of this movie. But if he was in this movie a lot more, I can say that it would have been a lot better. Uh, another like that I had in this movie had to do with the messaging of the film. And with that, you know, the underlying tone being of love, no matter, you know, uh, whether it's a strong signal or a weak signal of love, that love will always be there. 
And so that's just something that uh, really spoke to me. And I really did like it. As far as everything else in this movie, um, I didn't like anything else in this movie. This was a painful mess of a film that was not put together very well at all. It was random. It was incoherent. It was pretty much unbearable to watch. Um, I was very frustrated throughout this entire film, uh, even with me going in with low expectations. Now, I was excited about the film, yes, but leading up to a few days before this film was released, uh, you know, just some things were just coming out that just really wasn't making me feel well, just with the way they were promoting the film. Uh, you know, the embargo that was on the film that was uh, it, it was released yesterday and that's just not a good sign. It just really wasn't anything. Um, you know, I, I just didn't enjoy the movie. Uh, I, I didn't. It was horrible. I wanted to leave. Um, just some of the things that w just were just painstakingly awful is, first of all, the acting. Chris Pine's acting was great, but everybody else's acting was horrible. That goes that goes to Oprah Winfrey. Um, that goes to Reese Witherspoon. And that also goes to Mindy Kaling. And they play three characters that are, um, you know, that are, I guess, I don't even know what they are. But Oprah's character was named Mrs. Witch. Um, W-H-I-C-H. -H. Reese Witherspoon was Mrs. What's It? And Mindy Kaling's role was Mrs. Who? Um, they were random as hell in this movie. Not only could Oprah act, but not, neither could Reese or Mindy, especially Mindy. She kind of felt like she was in her own little movie talking to herself the whole time, which was very weird. I felt that Reese Witherspoon needed to calm the F down. She was hyper all the time for no reason, just wanting to change clothes and fly around this imaginative world that didn't make any sense at all. And, you know, Oprah's acting just really wasn't that bad, but she didn't really bring anything to this movie as well. Uh, now, this film is actually being described as a adventure, family and fantasy. Uh, but they need to go ahead and put horror in there as well, because there is a character in this movie by the name of Charles Wallace, played by Derek McCabe. He actually scared the hell out of me in this movie, not just in the end, but at the very beginning, too. There was just something very wrong with this little boy, and it just gave me the EBGBs. Um, it was he was a very uncomfortable character for me to watch. And um, another reason why I just really wanted to leave and get away from this movie. Something else that I hated in this movie were the effects. Um, I don't know what happened in this film, but Ava DuVernay did not have a vision to use these effects properly because they was all over the place. They were not finished and they were random as hell. Um, it just didn't flow. Everything looked blatantly, obviously fake, like with green screen and blue screen. Um, Oprah herself was like a, a, an enlarged Oprah. She was much bigger than the, uh, the other character that shared the same uh, screen time with her. Like with and I'm saying Mrs. Who and Mrs. What's It? Played by Mindy and Reese Witherspoon, uh, Mindy Kaling. It, it was just weird. I mean, Oprah came across as an overgrown spark, sparkly cookie monster or uh, something like that. And it, this, I mean, I don't even know how to explain it because it's so frustrating. But this was just a big movie of visual noise, just like a bunch of visual effects just vomited all over the screen and just it stuck there and then just started to ooze down. It's just like it, it wasn't pleasant. I mean, you can tell that they were trying to go for a film that you're looking like, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is beautiful. This is like Avatar uh, Avatar Part 2. But no, it, it, it wasn't like that at all. It was the exact opposite. Like, please, please stop. Can we get to a normal place? you know, um, that my senses can somewhat comprehend. Now, uh, the dialogue was crappy as well, just before they went on this little adventure to try to rescue Chris Pine's character, because Chris Pine's character is, um, I guess he's like a scientist or something. I, I can't really remember. And he's just talking about how he can travel, you know, 90 odd million miles across the universe in, the, in an instant, you know, um, with using something called a Tesseract. Um, which has to do with space time travel and things like that. It's a cool concept, but during his um, his little discoveries and him just trying to figure things out, you know, he vanishes and he's gone for four years. And so Storm Reed 
teams up with Oprah and her gang of people and, you know, her little brother, Charles Wallace, and her friend. And they are trying to, you know, bring him back. But there is some evil force that, that's thrown in as well. The story is just stupid. You know, I don't know if this is about, you know, stopping an evil cloud that's coming to kill everybody one by one or go and rescue uh, Chris Pine, Storm Reed's father. Storm Reed's name is Meg. I mean, it's just like all over the place. Like I was bored out of my mind. I was annoyed. I was irritated. I was frustrated with this movie. And like I was about to talk about the dialogue. The dialogue is horrible. I mean, there's one scene at the beginning of the movie where. Um, there's like a, a teacher and like the principal are just talking and the dialogue is just so forced. I mean, it's like, really, who wrote this thing here? Who put this together? The script is trash. And, you know, they were talking about Charles Wallace and it, it was it just the movie sucks balls. Um, and it really pains me to say that. But my goodness gracious, like I'm lost for words. Like I said, the only thing I liked about this movie was Chris Pine and the message of this movie that had to do with love. But the acting was bad across the board. The characters was bad, including the three little witches or devils or angels or whatever the hell they were. The effects were bad. The dialogue was bad. And what really frustrated me more than anything else is there was no rules or regulations with the time travel. Uh, I, I was going in this movie only being able to comprehend the third dimension, which we're living in right now. But I wanted to hear some fourth and fifth dimension. I wanted to hear some physics and some math and and some, you know, calculations, you know, being figured out, and, you know, uh, and, you know, problem solving and things like that. And just some scientific breakthroughs that I've never heard before. Like, oh, you know, the world like this. But have you ever thought about it? Like there, there was nothing remotely close to that at all. I mean. They're traveling across space and time, you know, using their imagination. And that's not even fully explained. The film is just a hot mess. The, the soundtrack is trash. Um, it doesn't flow with the movie at all. I'm just like, OK, the throwing in random music now. I mean, this movie is horrible on, on, on in epic, in epic proportions. And uh, it really hurts me to say that because I was really rooting for you, Avery DuVernay. But I'm not just going to say the movie is good, you know, and give you a pass. This movie was not good. You are two for one. Two with Selma and 13th one for this loss right here of a mess of a film, A Wrinkle in Time. If I had to rate this movie out of a one out of ten. Oh, man, I would give this uh, a two out of ten. Yeah, a two out of ten. But guys, you know, I said all that, but in the end, this is just my opinion. So have you seen A Wrinkle in Time or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go to my website, check me out there, bookmark it, look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of the screen, and I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. The second Avengers Infinity War trailer will be coming out soon, and I will be reacting to that, so subscribe. I also reacted to the Wreck-It Ralph um, trailer. I did not uh, react to the Mary Poppins in the uh, Peter Rabbit trailer, but I, I know I'm really late. I will be reacting to those. And I do have more movie reviews coming out as well for The Gringo and Strangers Pray at Night. So guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Wrinkle in Time starring Oprah Winfrey, Reese Witherspoon, and Storm Reed, directed by Ava DuVernay. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.